Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I want to welcome all of you today to our special Ramadan Tariqa Jadid webinar. My name is Zulfikar Sikter, and I am serving as Motamim Tariqa Jadid. Our esteemed panelists today include National Secretary Tariqa Jadid, Anwar Khan, uh, Mahmoud Khan Sahib, and Maulana Abdullah Dibba Sahib, who will also be our moderator for this program. So we will also have short tutorial clips containing how to navigate the finance website, as well as check your uh, balance online. So we will start today's uh, webinar with recitation of the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa ma lakum alla tunfiqu fi sabilillah wa lillahi mirathu samawati wal ard la yastawi minkum قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعذب درجة من الذين أنفقوا من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وقل لو عبد الله الحسنى والله بما تعملون خبير these are verses 11 to 12 of Surah Al-Hadid. Translation, I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan in the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. And why is it that you spend not in the way of Allah? While to Allah belongs the heritage of the heavens and the earth, those of, who, those of you who spent and fought before the victory are not equal to those who did so later. They are greater in rank than those who spent and fought afterwards. And to all has Allah promised good, and Allah is well aware of what you do. Who is he that will lend to Allah a goodly loan? So he will increase it manifold for him, and he will have a generous reward. Jazakum. So uh, this is a webinar, our first time uh, from the Tariq Jadi department from MK USA. So I want to welcome all of you once again. And uh, during the course of the webinar, if you have any questions, uh, you can use one of the tabs uh, for the Q&A at the very bottom or at the top, depending on if you have uh, full screen. And you could ask your questions uh, using the Q&A tab. Uh, you could also use the chat option to um, type in your questions. And inshallah, we will have a short uh, question answer session at the very end of the program. 
uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our moderator, uh, Malana Abdullah Dibba Sahib. Zakumullah <laughs> Sanajiza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Ma ba'du fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Zakalam Muhtamim Saab and Adnan Saab for that beautiful recitation. And um, I personally have been looking forward to this program to learn and share um, some antidotes and some ideas about what Tehrik al-Jadid is about. And this effort, um, the main drive from this effort is what Hazrat Khalif al Masih during the tour of uh, last year in the United States, he gave very ambitious targets uh, to the United States Jamaat and specifically to Majlis Qudam al ahmadi as well. So we felt that we would educate brothers and sisters around the country with the help of our very respected National Secretary Saab, Tehrik al-Jadid and uh, Mahmoud Khan Sahib. So I'll share my uh, screen here to share the presentation that I wanted us to go through, inshallah. And so I'll just ask everyone to maybe pull your phones out and you're gonna either hover over this QR code or you can type in that link that you see ahaslides.com forward slash 241x4. So either you have your phone camera open. You don't need to take a picture. Just have it over the, uh, the QR code and a link should pop up in front of your screen. And as people enter, we'll be able to see how many people are entering the webinar. So three people have come in so far. Or you can just open your browser and ahaslides.com forward slash 24ix4. Okay, it looks like we have, people are figuring it out. So with this, as the slides go on, we will also have a sort of a quiz. So uh, let's see how many people will be paying attention. Um, as I go through the slides, I'll also ask some questions just to keep it interactive and to get that participation flowing as well, inshallah. So when we get to about maybe 25-ish, um, we can start um, getting into it. So the two options are you either open your browser, Google Chrome or Safari, whatever your browser is on your computer or phone. And, or you, you type in ahaslides.com forward slash 241x4, as you can see in the screen, or you just open your phone camera and just scan that QR code. We have 12 people that have joined so far. And we can get a couple more. <clears throat> it's a bit slow. People are coming on. Maybe the technology of us <laughs> helping people are more familiar with Zoom now since we've been doing a lot of Zoom webinars uh, during and after COVID. I would have hoped more people would have been. A lot of people are liking it, definitely. That's good. So we are 14. Okay, we can always come back for those who want to join later, um, just to... Okay. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'll give a, a quick overview of the history of Tariq al-Jadid. Um, and this was initiated on November 23rd, 1943 by Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmoud Ahmad, Khalif al-Masih II, anhu, Hazrat Muslim anhu, was the one that initiated Tahrik al And there was a background to it because the Jamaat was going through some challenges. And there was an opposition of Majlis al-Ahrar. There were an opposition group that was viciously going against the Jamaat. They wanted to hurt the Jamaat. And um, this was a very active group. So Hazrat Muslim anhu seeing that the Majlis Ihrar was becoming uh, very popular in the opposition to the Jamaat, Huzur wanted Ahmadi Muslims to re rebuttal these attacks by showing through an exemplary character. So as that Muslim Ahmadi al -Anu said, and I quote, I see the earth slipping from under the feet of Ahrar, that is their group. They say they will wipe out this Jamaat. 
but Allah Almighty has told me of a plan with which the Jamaat will spread in all countries of the world and no one will be able to destroy it. So the Majlis Ihrar was focused on that specific place that they thought Jamaat had its headquarters and they were going to end it in 1943. So Huzur said, Allah has showed me a plan where not only here will this Jamaat spread, but around the whole world. And that plan was Tariq al So Huzur launched it in 1943. So at the end of the 19th year of Tahrik al after 19 years, Huzur then in extending the Tahrik al scheme, as a Muslim who said, now that 19 years are coming to an end, I have decided that Tahrik al will continue up to your last breath. So this then became a continuous thing. So this was directly, as Hazrat Masih Muhammad has said, that the jihad of the latter days, which is the jihad of the pen, where Jamaat, Jamaat's teachings would be spread to end all sorts of persecution and hate that the Jamaat would face. This would be the best form of jihad. So one can see Tahrik al-Jadid as that initiation of the Muslim Allah Ta'ala Anhu. Huzur says about the purpose is to acquire, fund, acquire such a fund with which Allah's message can be delivered as far as the corners of the earth with ease and facility. So Tahrik al-Jadid was going to be that main tool through which tabligh and the message of Hazrat Masih was going to spread around the whole world. And how did that happen? The funds that Tahrik al-Jadid, that are collected for Tahrik al-Jadid, then when Huzur initiated it, they had these main purposes. So with Tahrik al-Jadid, funds, mosques will be built around the whole world. So when we see masajid being built in the United States and other countries around the world, that funding comes from that Tahrik al-Jadid that has a Muslim of Al-Anhu initiated. This was one of the purposes. He wanted masajid, mosques to be built around the whole world and also mission houses to be built around the whole world. Tariq al-Jadid was funding or is still funding that as well. And the education of the global community of what the Holy Quran is about in translation of the Holy Quran in multiple languages around the whole world, this is also funded by Tariq al-Jadid. And of course, training missionaries who will be educating our own members and doing the work of Tabligh around the whole world. So the training of missionaries and funding all of those activities, Jamiat, that also comes under Tahrik al So these are the four main scopes that when members every year that we make those contributions, Alhamdulillah, these purposes are being able to be fulfilled with the mission of Hazrat Masim Salam around the whole world. So I'm going to get players to now join in and uh, we will start this quiz. So as people join in, you can put in your name and um, it will be a competition, it will be a little quiz. So as you put in your name, your name is pop up on the screen and inshallah we can get the spirit of competition going. So we have two people, Salman, Bilal, Sabur, Shakur, okay. So if you're just joining in, that's the QR code on the side or this, the, the link. So you, when you just go in there, you should be able to put your name in. And uh, inshallah, we can get there. Got eight people in, nine. So just a quick reminder is for the Muslim who initiated it in 1943, it was in response of the Ahrar, the opposition group that wanted to end Jamaat Ahmadiyya. So Huzur, in ending that opposition, he said Allah Ta'ala had shown him that the Jamaat was going to spread around the whole world through a new plan that Allah Almighty Himself had shown him. And that was the Tariq al -Jadid. And Huzur wanted Jamaat members to, to adopt a lifestyle with which this mission would be fulfilled. And it has four main um, purposes, building mission houses, building mosques, translation of the Holy Quran, and training of missionaries around the whole world. Okay, so we can, we can start the squeeze. We have 13. Okay, so who initiated Tahrik al-Jadid? So you can look at your devices and answer. You have uh, these options. You look carefully. Who initiated Tahrik al-Jadid? Was it Hazrat Mizah Bashir Ahmad Anhu, the Promised Messiah Salatu Salam, or was it Hazrat Muslim Anhu? Two, one.
Okay, alhamdulillah. Looks like everyone's been paying attention. Uh, everyone got that correct? Has the Muslim or the Lan who initiated Tariqa Jadid? So the quicker you answer, you will get more points, actually. I need to mention that too. So Bilal Sahib is leading the chart now. Uh, question number two, you can look at your devices again. The purpose of Tariqa Jadid include the purposes. So this is more than one. The more you answer, the better. Building new mosques, building new mission houses to take care of orphans, training missionaries, or translation of the Holy Quran. What are the purposes of Tahrik al-Jadid? Why did Huzur initiate it? What did he want to achieve through the scheme of Tahrik al-Jadid? Okay. Okay, the general participation is really good. Let's see how that's going. Bilal Saab, mashallah, is still leading. And Mustafa Saab is second. Close. It's very close. Okay. So the question then is, you know, when people talk about raising funds and our uh, financial sacrifice, when we want new mosques to be built, we, we go for some new fundraising. We're paying for Waqf uh, al-Jadid, Tariq al-Jadid, Jalsa Salana, Chanda Am, or Wasiyat. How can one person do all of these things? And sometimes some people do get a little overwhelmed and, and these questions get asked. So former Muhtamim Saab, Tariq al-Jadid, Rizwan Khan Saab, uh, would share some of those thoughts with us here. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hazrat Muslim Aud Razila, one who explained in context of Tariq al Jadid that if we wish to make sacrifices, then we must create the environment wherein sacrifices can be made. For example, if we are barely living within our means, even if we wanted to offer everything that we have as a sacrifice, we could not offer anything. There are many times when the Jamaat needs us to make special sacrifices. If in that situation a person makes $5,000 and his expenses are $5,000, and even if he says that I am ready to offer all of my wealth for the sake of the Jamaat, that statement is meaningless because it comes out to zero. If we wish to offer sacrifice to the Jamaat, then we have to have means by which we can offer those sacrifices. If a person has no property whatsoever, and he says that I'm going to give all of my property for the sake of the Jamaat, then what meaning does that statement have? It does not give any practical benefit to Islam or to the Jamaat. When we have nothing that we can offer, and we do not make a change in our lifestyle, and while having nothing, we offer everything that we have. Azur said that if a person does this deliberately, then he is a hypocrite who is foolish. And someone who does this out of ignorance and enthusiasm, that person is sincere but is foolish. If we wish to be able to make sacrifices when the Jamaat is in need of us to give sacrifices and to be joined in those blessings, then we must make preparations ahead of time. And this is what Tariq al-Jadid has come to teach us, a change in our lifetime by which we create an environment in our lives that is conducive to sacrifice. Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila, one who explained that for this sacrifice, it is necessary that our families be involved as well. If our spouse and our children are not also willing to give a sacrifice, then there is very little we can do to change our lifestyle. And our individual lifestyle change cannot have as great of an effect as the effect that changing the lifestyle of our family does. A person can force his wife or her husband to change their lifestyle to be able to make greater sacrifices, but forcing would only create disorder within homes. And so in order to create this environment of sacrifice, we must develop this spirit of sacrifice within our families. Hazrat Muslim Maud one who also explained that at times there are special sacrifices that are needed from the Jamaat. And those sacrifices are not of a permanent nature. In Islam, it is no sin to be rich. And it is no sin to enjoy the riches of this world that a person has worked hard for, as long as it does not go into extravagance. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Amma bi ni'mati rabbi ka However, if there is a time of emergency or a time of war, and a person does not contribute at that time, then that living in affluence can be a type of extravagance. Hazrat Muslim Aud Razila, one who explained that there was a very sensitive time when a battle was approaching, and a great sacrifice was needed from the Muslims. At that time, Hazrat Umar Razila, one who decided that he would exceed Hazrat Abu Bakr Razila, one who, and he brought half of his wealth only to find that Hazrat Abu Bakr who had brought all of his wealth. Hazrat Muslim Aud who explains that these types of sacrifices were not needed on a daily basis. Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Abu Bakr understood that this was a sensitive time when a special sacrifice was needed as an emergency. Similarly in the Jamaat, many times come when there is a need for Ahmadis to offer special sacrifices. So Hazrat Muslim Aud who explained that many of the temporary restrictions he wished members of the Jamaat to impose on themselves in order to increase their sacrifices were not necessarily of a permanent nature, but they were because of a situation that required an emergency response. In this, So we can see here, I just wanted to pause here and then just share that 
the main point that when we are talking about the Hikaj Jadid and we are telling members to make these sacrifices, we all know that you make a promise that you're going to pay a certain amount. Thinking of all those needs that the Jamaat has, that Khalifatul Masih is leading us towards, these very important things that the Jamaat needs. We, as soldiers of the Jamaat and as members of this Jamaat, as it was cleared in that video, these are things that you have to make on a permanent basis. We have to adopt lifestyles where whenever the need comes for us to make a sacrifice, then we are ready. We have savings in place so that when sacrifice is called for, we have something to give. This is the main purpose of what Tahrik al is about. The money part is one thing, but it's making yourself ready at every single point in time. And this is the point that I want all of us to be able to take home and inshallah ta'ala learn from this. That whenever you hear the name or the word Tahrik al it is that spirit that is being taught. That has a Muslim who wanted. He even told people to eat less just so that they can sacrifice more. And those temporary lifestyle that he wanted from us is what this whole department is about. So we'll go forward uh, with our uh, presentation again. <clears throat> so Huzur, during the 2022 tour, when he came to the United States, mentioned, um, and again, I'm sure Anwar Khan Sahib would give us more insight into this. Huzur's guidance was that in countries such as the UK, Germany, and Canada, one third of the total amount accounted is recovered from Majlis Qudam al hamidiyah in these campaigns. And that is Tariq al and Waqf al Therefore, MKA, that is Majlis Qudam al hamidiyah should take lead in these campaigns and not be behind. So as members of, Tariq, uh, of Majlis Qudam al hamidiyah USA, Huzur gave us a target that Qudam should take the lead in participating in Tariq al in making promises for the year to say, this is the total amount I want to pay towards the scheme of the Hikaj Jadid so that these needs of the Jamaat would be met. And then throughout the year, we try our best to keep making consistent and permanent payments so that we fulfill that pledge at the end of the year. So this was Huzur's target that he gave us. But the specific amount that Huzur gave to Khudam al and I want us all to look at this number very carefully, uh, Huzur wants people to take ambitious, we wanted us to make ambitious targets. And the number here is $1.3 million. If we look at it, it looks like a huge amount, but the Jamaat Ahmadiyya has never fallen behind in such calls that Khalifa al Masih makes. And for Khudam, the nations cannot be reformed without the reformation of the youth. We all need to take this personally. How much can I contribute towards this amount to make sure that we fulfill that desire of the Khalifa al Masih and we fulfill our responsibility to show that when we are reformed, then there's hope for the United States. When we as the young ones and for the parents who are listening, you know, let's share these thoughts with our Khudam. We need to begin to see that whatever target is set by Khalifa al Masih, whatever number he says, whether it's with Wasiya, Tariq al Jadid, or any other um, scheme, we need to take it personally and try to make sure that we see ourselves as a part of it. So the drive that we'll be doing will not end today. This is just the beginning, but we'll be traveling around the country. We'll be meeting Khudam and members of the Jamaat to encourage people to participate, inshallah ta'ala. Huzur said about the, the recommended rate, people ask, how much should I promise for Tariq al How much should I give? In 1953, Huzur said in a Friday sermon, if someone pledges to sacrifice the amount equivalent to one half of his monthly income, for instance, if his income is 100 rupees, he pledges 50 rupees, this will be considered a good sacrifice. And if someone pledges the amount equaling his full monthly income, we will understand that he has burdened himself in making this sacrifice. So this is a recommendation that Huzur gave that there's no specific one, but this is something that we can look at. As the Khalid al-Masih the third also mentioned, that from the very first day, Tahrik al Jadid has been based on optional sacrifice. It is said that Chanda Tahrik al Jadid should be at least one fifth of the month's income. That's at least, but this is not a prescribed rate. So you can pay as high as you want. But as we learned from that video as well, when special um, efforts are being made, then we should also make those special sacrifices. So, how much did Huzur set as MKA's target for this year for Tahrik al Jadid? Is it 1.1 million? Is it 3 million? Is it 1.3 million US dollars? If we remember, what target are we going to try to accomplish as Qudam al 
Let's see who is going to get that right. Time's up. MashaAllah, everyone, well, yeah, everyone got that right. So one person, so it's 1.3, not 1.1 million. So $1.3 million. Alhamdulillah. Bilal Sahib is still leading. <laughs> okay, question number four. I'm going to get almost to that end now. Is there a set prescribed rate for tehrik e jadid This is quite straightforward. Is there a specific prescribed rate for tehrik e jadid Or is it open? Yes or no? This one is more about how quickly you answer it. Let's see if Bilal Sahib takes it home. Is there a set prescribed rate for tehrik e jadid No, so there is no specific prescribed rate. Okay. And then, mashallah, Bilal Sahib still leading with Sabu Shakur Sahib came second. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so that ends uh, my presentation here. And I'm going to um, introduce our next uh, speaker, and that is Anwar Muhammad Khan Sahib, to share with us. And he's our keynote speaker uh, from the National Amla. Representative of um, um Sahib here from the national, I mean, representative of the national amla as far as tehrik e jadid is concerned. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Muhammad Khan Sahib. I'll pass it on to you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can I have uh, uh, access to my uh, presentation? G, you can share your screen. Where is my screen? Sorry. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As has been very eloquently said by Imam Dubai Sahib, uh, that uh, I'm so glad to be in the last 10 days of Ramadan, talking about uh, the most important uh, scheme which is spreading the word of Islam around the world. By the grace of Allah, uh, many avenues have been mentioned. One avenue which I'm going to restrict myself to, uh, which is uh, incredibly uh, very, very successful, and it is the hallmark of Jamaat MD Alamgir. We have uh, achieved such a success in that, that no one in the entire world of Islam can compete with us. MashaAllah, in such a short time, by the grace of Allah and the navigator of, of uh, Khilafat Ahmadiyya, we have, MashaAllah, translated Holy Quran into 75 languages. And this is the last Rashira. So Quran is the most important uh, uh, element of this Ramadan. And uh, in fact, yesterday only I heard from the Imam Sahib that whoever reads Holy Quran uh, in odd nights, it will be blessed by a thousand times, inshallah. Jamaat Amdi Alam, Alamgir has been translating Holy Quran since 1944. Uh, actually, we translated Holy Quran in 1906, the first one in English, by Hazrat Mawli Sher Ali Saab, and then under Tariq Ejdeed, Khalif II, uh, in October of 1944. Uh, presented or launched a scheme of translating Holy Quran into eight languages. So let me go uh, uh, turn on my, are you able to see this? No, we're not able to see it. You're not able to see it. Uh, would you uh, then, uh, uh, Zulfakar Sahib, could you present uh, your your portion of it? Yes, inshallah. Give me one moment, please. It's the same presentation I sent to him as well. But I will keep it for my reference here. Well, he is presenting it anyway. So uh, the Holy Quran uh, uh, translations are being worked at, and I'm going to be presenting that. Uh, why we have to translate Holy Quran into different languages, Jazakallah. Uh, the, the first slide which is being presented here, it is slightly outdated uh, that today the world population is 7.88 billion, about uh, close to 7.9 billion with approximately 350,000 births 
and 147,000 deaths per day. And projected population is 10 billion, uh, which is in 2050. So it means uh, by 2050, 10 billion people would be uh, on this earth. Next, please. <clears throat> now, there are 7,000 languages which are being spoken in the world. That include one speaker to 1.5 billion people. The top 10 languages are listed as follows. Mandarin, English, Spanish, Hindi, Arabic, Russian, Japanese, German, Portuguese, uh, Bangla, and the speakers of these languages are greater than 100 million. Mm -hmm. This is uh, based on Language Today, the magazine of May 19th, uh, gave this uh, uh, great graduation of languages. Next, please. Now, Hazel Khalifa Masi, as I mentioned, uh, on October 20th, 1944, uh, advised Jamaat to undertake translation into eight languages. And these are the languages he proposed at that time. Think about it. In 1944, Huzur offered that Jamaat should uh, uh, concentrate on translating Holy Quran into these languages, English, Russian, German, Dutch, French, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Interestingly, seven decades later, a famous linguist, Mr. Weber, cites these to be the most important languages of the world today. Think about what was presented uh, seven decades ago by Khalid II was almost prophetic because even today, these are the most important languages of the world today. Non, the last point is very interesting. Watch this point. non ahmadi Muslims have done 25 to 30 translations while Jamaat has printed translation in 75 languages of the world. So this is the greatest success. And every Khadim and every Tifl and every uh, uh, Nasser and every Lajda member, every Ahmadi should know the outstanding achievement of Jamaat and the Alamgir that we translated Holy Quran into 75 languages. And no, no other Muslim community can, can boost or now they have a special uh, department in Saudi Arabia dedicated with lots of funding to translate and they don't even come in many languages. For example, next please. Next slide. These are the languages, 75 languages, 69 have been mentioned here, six have been added later. These are the languages and these are the years when they were printed since 1953, okay. I have to give you a small example here. What happened in 1953? I don't know if Kodam would know that because most of them were, were not, not there at that time. Uh, there was a big um, turmoil in Pakistan when uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya was forced to be called uh, non-Muslims and a law was presented to Justice Munir. That time, uh, that time he was the uh, Chief Justice of Supreme Court. And on January uh, of 1953, when he was presenting the case or he was, uh, the case of Jamaat Ahmadiyya was on his table. He came and he said, and this is the news of the newspaper, Jung and Dawn in Pakistan. He came uh, uh, to the, chamber and from the chamber on the table and he said today i have a case where people are proposing that members of jamaat ahmadiyya should be ousted from the pale of islam and ironically i have received two gifts yesterday and these two gifts are translation of holy quran into dutch and swahili language and these are both done by jamaat ahmadiyya that Jamaat Ahmadiyya, which is being proposed to be ousted from the mm -hmm. Pale of Islam, are the ones who translated Holy Quran into Dutch and Swahili. This, is, this was the headline of uh, uh, the newspaper, Jung and Dawn. That's where we learned it. So by the grace of Allah, the, from the very start, Jamaat uh, made an effort to uh, hold these translations. And uh, uh, by the grace of Allah, 75 have been done so far. Next, please. Next. Okay, now before I go to the next, uh, let me present to you one additional quality of Jamaat Ahmadiyya 
Alamgir in terms of Holy Quran that we are the only entity in the world, only organization. There is no other organization in the world who have translated Holy Quran or the blinds into Braille language. They can read the Holy Quran in Braille language in 12 volumes. Uh, we just did a, a exhibition and uh, by the grace of Allah, there are 40 million blinds in the world. Those blinds can read Holy Quran through Braille uh, language. And in Nigeria, by the grace of Allah, we are uh, creating an institute uh, uh, for the blinds. And there are a few, uh, mashallah, missionaries who are blind and they are uh, teaching there. So I think that uh, this is a great accomplishment of Jamaat Ahmadiyya because nobody else is doing this service for Quran. Now, what we did here is we categorized all the languages into uh, European, Asian, and uh, uh, African languages. These three groups I made. These are the languages, 16 languages uh, of European uh, origin in which we have translated Holy Quran. So it appears that 75 languages is not a great uh, event because if there are 400 some odd major languages, 75 is a fraction of it. But when we probe into it and looked into it to see how many people we are able to reach through these languages, we did, did that uh, study very carefully and found out that these 16 languages, we can reach 2.56 billion people who can read the Holy Quran into European languages. Next, please. The Asian languages, there are 40 Asian languages in which Holy Quran has been translated. And we are able to reach 2.8 billion people who can read Holy Quran in Asian languages. The next one is, Next, please. These are African languages, 16. In fact, there are two more which are coming. In, uh, uh, they are in print right now. Uh, we have translated Holy Quran into uh, 16 languages. Swahili is a language which is spoken by 50 million people. And it was translated in 1953 in East Africa by Sheikh Mubarak Ahmed Saab and also a gentleman from Kenya who helped him, uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, he was the ambassador of, uh, in Kenya who, who was linguist in Swahili. So they translated the Holy Quran into Swahili language. So if you put all these together, we, we can say very safely that although there are 75 languages, but we are able to reach close to 6 billion people of the world. This is the reason I showed population statistics that we are about 7.8, 7.9 million a billion people. And through these translations, if somebody wants to read Holy Quran, there are about 6 billion people who can read Holy Quran in the language of their own. In fact, uh, next please. Okay, these, there are inspirational incidences which took place into these translations. The reason I'm presenting this to all Khuddam that Tahrik al-Jadid is not you give chanda and be done with. The work which is being conducted through the chanda which is being presented is humongous. Imagine if people from these holy Qurans uh, are attracted or drawn to Islam and many, many of them are drawn to Islam. You would be surprised that uh, uh, there was a BBC reporter. She was arrested in Afghanistan and Mullah Omar gave her a copy of the Holy Quran. She read that in one week. And when she came back to London, she was deported back. She went directly to a mosque and he said, this holy book has saved me mm -hmm. and I want to join Islam. So Holy Quran is so powerful. He said, they asked them, my mom said, what did you do? Are you under pressure? She said, no. I read all the verses of Holy Quran, which talk about the women's rights and women's place in Islam. 
And I learned that whatever is being presented in outside Islam against Islam is all wrong. And Quran attests to that. And I read it personally. So she joined Islam. She is now a missionary of Islam, mashallah, and give lectures. And she is a BBC reporter. And Huzur mentioned that in one of his khutbahs as well. So I think that you never know that which Quran language will draw somebody to Ahmadiyyat, to uh, the true Islam. So these inspirational incidences took place in these translations, during these translations. Uh, Ashanti Tui is being done uh, very recently. It's one of those recent translations. The Japanese translation, the gen gentleman uh, who translated into Japanese, Oyabashi, is still uh, alive and mashallah. He was given um, a test to translate the Holy Quran into Japanese by Khalifa Masih the fourth, Rahimullah. Uh, and uh, he was given the task to translate Surah Dukhan into Japanese. And she, he did that, and Huzur sent it to seven different linguists of Japanese language, and they all said the translation is, is uh, absolutely correct. In fact, the Chinese translation, which has been done by, uh, by our Chinese uh, ambassador, Chinese missionary, is incredible because a book has been printed who uh, presents that the best translation of uh, Holy Quran into Chinese among all the three, four translations is that of Ahmadiyya, Jamaat. Next, please. The women translators, mashallah, we have uh, women who have translated Holy Quran into, the, into languages. Bosnian was done by Sister uh, Farah Edwig, uh, Catalanian, uh, is, um, has been done by Miss Sylvia Morales. She accepted Islam, Ahmadiyyat, while she was translating Holy Quran. Dutch was uh, Nasra Simonman. She, in fact, I had a, an opportunity to meet her in uh, Indonesia when she was visiting Indonesia, and she translated Holy Quran into Dutch. Greek translation was done, uh, alhamdulillah, by Alia Aziz Rahman Sahiba, Dr. Aziz Rahman. Dr. Rahman Saab of Albany, his wife, uh, Alia, and there is a whole story of how she did that. And Khalifa al Masih Rabbi said, said to her that I have been waiting for somebody to translate Holy Quran into Greek, and Allah has blessed you to join Ahmadiyyat. Your first job is to translate Holy Quran, and that's what she did. Hindi was done by Atiyat Rukayum and Portuguese. Now, Portuguese, I pay tribute to her, um, and Sister Amina. Sister Amina was drawn to Ahmadiyyat uh, through a vision of Promised Messiah in, in her dreams. She accepted Ahmadiyyat, and the first thing she did is translated Holy Quran into Portuguese. And you know, Khalifa Masih Rabe gave her a title. And the title of uh, uh, Sister Amina is First Ahmadiyya Female Muslim Missionary. That was the 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 uh, 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 how do you say a name given to uh, Sister Amina Almeida of uh, uh, Brazil. So uh, and she also gave her whole her personal house, which is now our mosque in Brazil. Mashallah. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this is a very short, uh, this is an old, old um, how, say, how to say, slide. Uh, the new picture is different, 22, 23, I mean 21, 22. We collected $3 million uh, instead of 2.2, that is two years ago. And we have 15,000 participants per capita. Last year was $200. And our target for this year is the U.S. target is 3.6 million, and as uh, Imam Dibas mentioned, uh, and Zulfiqar Sikdar Sahib agreed, is the uh, target presented by Khalifa Masih and Talab Aziz for Khudam Lamdiya is 1.3 million. And we need uh, 19,000 participants this year. So if we do that, if all of you uh, offer the pledge which has been uh, mentioned, 
by either Khalifa al-Masih the second or Khalifa al-Masih the third. Khalifa al-Masih the third recommended 20% of your one month salary. And Khalifa al-Masih the second said a good um, pledge would be 50% of your one month salary to be paid in one year. So if you are able to do a portion of that, at least uh, whatever pledge you want to make, I would recommend and request that you play, you pay at least 50% of that during the month of Ramadan because it would, uh, it would be accepted by Allah in multiple ways, uh, over 700 times, inshallah, um, this will be accepted by Allah. So I'm requesting that you should read Holy Quran, take advantage of the fact that these translations are available. You can order them from uh, uh, Ahmadiyya Book Depot or uh, that uh, AMI book, bookstore. All of them are available. In fact, uh, even the Braille, you can uh, buy in 12 volumes, it is available. So uh, any uh, of the Holy Quran if you want to buy uh, and share it with your Chinese friends or the friends who speak other languages, you can offer them as a gift on Eid or uh, at different occasions and uh, encourage them to read it and decide for themselves that what Islam is being presented outside and what Islam is being presented in the Holy Quran. May Allah enable us to do so. Any questions? Jazakum Allah, Sana Jazak. Jazakum Allah, Sana Jazak, and Khan for yet a very inspiring um, presentation. And the beauty of Tariq al Jadid, you know, we learn from here that you only talk about the Holy Quran. Imagine if we were to talk about the other benefits or oh. other services of Tariq al Jadid, we could be here all night. And, you know, and I, and I wanted to share, uh, we were talking earlier about the book that Amran Khan Sahib wrote, which has so many faith inspiring incidents. Uh, I'm sure we don't have time to go through all of them, but we can find it on, on Al Islam. Uh, it's a very popular book when uh, Anwar Khan Sahib mentioned very faith inspiring incidents around the world of how people participate in Tariq al Jadid. So, to give a quick um, overview of how we can make payments to Tariq al this is a very easy one on one. Um, we all know about the Jamaat website, and I'll share my screen here real quick, and uh, we can we can just learn how to you know watch this together. Alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. This tutorial is to show you how to pay your channel online, and today we'll be talking about Tariq al So first of all, you go to this website right here chanda.ahmadiyya.us forward slash pay chanda.ahmadiyya.us forward slash pay and this page is going to pop up here you will put your information the person who's paying the chanda so i'll put in my own information and my jamaat this has to be correct um and my member code in case your member code is not correct it will prompt you to rectify it but if you feel like your member code is correct and the system is not accepting it, you can still go ahead and make the payment and it can be uh, rectified later. The different forms of Chanda Jaat are mentioned here today. We focus more on Tehrik Ejadid. And this eye here, you can hold over it and it will tell you what it's about, a brief introduction. The same with the other forms of Chanda Jaat as well. So if I want to pay, for example, $250 for Tehrik Ejadid, I'll just put that in here. And um, there's other forms of chanda as well. In case you don't see them here, you want to make a one stop and pay multiple chanda yad. You can see the different chanda yad and you can select them. If you do, for example, eat fund, you want to pay $10, you can do the same thing. If you want to pay for more family members, there's an add another chanda donor here, a wife or a child, you can put their information. You can add up to six members um, at a time to all pay chanda that you want to pay for. So in case I'm here, I'm just only paying for myself, so I'll just delete this donor. So after I'm done with the amount that I've put in, $250 for Tehrik al and $10 for each fund, I'll proceed onto the next page, and it will validate my information. I can make a one-time payment, or I can make a recurring payment. Recurring payment is if I want to pay the same amount, um, the frequency can either be weekly, bi-weekly, <clears throat> monthly, or, or whatever option is available here. So here, um, um, and what date do you want the payments to be to, to payment plan to start? You put that in here from today or whatever day of the month. But here we're only doing 
a one-time payment. So I select that and I go to next. And here I'll put my full name and my address and all the information that is asking for. The form of payment, you have three options, your bank account, your debit card, or your credit card. They all come with little fees and you can click on this link and it will show you what all those fees are. The best option as you can clearly see is to use the bank account, um, which is gonna be six cents. Or if you use a debit card, it is going to come with these little fees. So the best option for yourself and for the Jamaat is to choose the bank account. So you click on the bank account, or if you want to choose credit card, you can also do that. So bank account will give you all the information that you need to put in. Or if you choose debit card, same thing, you need to put in all the information and credit card, same thing. So as I said, best option is the bank account, but you don't have to do that. So you put in all the right information and you click next and your payment should be done. So you will get a receipt for each member of your family that's paying Chanda that you've put their information in here as a donor. They will all get receipts and confirmation numbers and that will go straight into the system. So that is the, it's pretty straightforward. Um, as we have said in the month of Ramadan, we are encouraging all members. Um, this is a promise that you can make and in the month of Ramadan, you don't have to pay it all at once. Um, it's, it's good to understand that when you make that promise in the beginning of the year, Tariqa Jadid year starts in uh, November and it ends in October of the next year. So we have a whole year to make your promise and then you pay monthly. And you can also check your balance. So let's say six months have gone by, you missed a month or two, you don't know how much you have left or how much you've paid. Jamaat also has the system from that same website. Now play a quick video to show us how to do that as well. But you can check your balance anytime during the year. They will email you and they'll show you a whole breakdown of what, what your balance looks like. This is a tutorial to show you how to check your balance, your payment status, as far as your chanda is concerned for Jamaat Ahmadiyya USA. You come to that same website, chanda.ahmadiyya.us forward slash pay. And this is to pay your chanda. But on that same page, there's this option here, get your payment status. When you click on that, it will bring you this page. This is the only page you have to worry about. And this will give you your status. So here you'll, you'll uh, put in your member code, it has to be correct, and your email. So I'll put in my correct email and my member code, and it can send me the record of my entire family unit, and for the, and I can choose that so I know how much each of my family members have paid for Chanda for that year. And that's the current fiscal year statement, 2022 to 2023. And here, because we're talking about Tehri Kajadid, you can also find out your current year Tehri Kajadid, how much you've paid so far, what your promise is, and this, full statement will be sent to your email that you have provided here. And once you're done, you just have to confirm, you know, the robot, and then the payment status is gonna get, send me my payment status. So this is what the message you will receive, thanking you for doing this. And then you go back to your email, you will receive the uh, payment status. So we open the floor now uh, for questions. I'm sure some members have questions. We have uh, Mia Saab, uh, here with us, Hamid Rahman Sahib. We have uh, Anwar Muhammad Khan Sahib with us. And for Najibai, you want to check on? We do have some questions that have been uh, sent forward. Maybe we can start looking at those. Ji, Assalamualaikum, Rabbi Saab. Ji, Rabbi Saab. So as you mentioned, we have questions coming in throughout the webinar, and then we'll inshallah open it up also to any brothers who would like to raise their hand and ask their questions verbally. So again, as a reminder to everybody, you see a raise hand icon on your screen. You can click that and we'll unmute you and you can ask your question to either respected Anwar Mahmood Khan Saab or to respected Murphy Saab or to uh, Naib Amir Saab as well. Uh, so uh, while we give people some time to uh, raise their hands and ask some questions, Saab, if there's any questions in the Q&A box, maybe we can start there. Gee, so we had one attendee that raised their hand. I think it's Bilal Tahir Saab, his hand is up. Uh, from the Q&A question, I think, uh, Amjad Khan Saab has said, Assalamu Alaikum. Would you explain the connection or the link between Tehrik Jadeen and Nizami now? That is a new world order or Nizami Wasiyat. So, um, if I can 
Assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Ji, wa alaikum salam. We we are we're going to deal with one question real quick, yeah. and then we'll we'll come back to you. No, just uh, alaikum. Yes, doctor, please go ahead. Ji, ji, no. Assalam. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk uh, in Tariq e Jadid. You know the question on Nazamino and uh, uh, Tariq e Jadid and link between Wasiyat. So, uh, very briefly, that after the first and second world war. And even before, there were a lot of dis distress between the wealth and non-wealth, and who is rich, who is not rich, and people uh, had looking for different systems. So many systems like uh, communism, Marxism, uh, Leninism, Fascism, they started uh, to win the hearts of the people. But uh, as a matter of fact, Hazrat Mishnah to Islam wrote the book called Wasiyat in which, as a matter of fact, he's the one who started the, uh, the new world order and he gave the explanation. And uh, later on, uh, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Sani al-Muslim Anhu uh, gave a lecture in 1942 about uh, uh, nizam e -No, in which he explained the different systems, that how different systems came and they failed in which he mentioned that the system started by the Muslato Islam uh, system of Wasiyat is actually the uh, new world order. So uh, he, he writes uh, uh, as a Muslim that God, therefore, let me say to Urdu, I think that's more powerful. I think most of the members of IC, they understand Urdu. Allah Ta'ala ne mere dil mein tahreek e jadid ka alka farmaya taaki iske zariya se abhi se ek markazi fund qaim ho jaye aur ek markazi jaydad paida ki jaye jiske zariye se tabligh e ahmadiyat ko wasi kiya jaye bas tahreek e jadid kya hai wo khuda taala ke samne aqeedat ki ye niyaz pesh karne ke liye hai ke wasiyat ke zariya to jis nizam ko duniya mein qaim karna chahta hai iske aane mein bhi der hai isliye hum tere huzur उस निजाम का एक छोटा सा नक्शा तारीख के जदीद की जरिया पेश करते हैं ताकि इस वक्त तक निजाम वसीयत मजबूत हो इसके जरिया से जो भी तबलीग इस्लाम वसी की जाए सो हुजूर से दैट गॉड देयरफॉर इंस्पायर्ड मी विद द आईडिया ऑफ तारीख के जदीद एज ए मींस ऑफ एस्टैब्लिशिंग ए सेंट्रल फंड व्हिच मे बी यूटिलाइज towards the more intensive propagation of Ahmadiyyat. The Tariq Jadid, therefore, is a symbolic offering of faith to God, indicating that as time is not yet ripe for the universal, universal establishment of the new order based upon al wasiyat we proceed to construct a humble model of it by means of Tariq Jadid. It shows the basic uh, and most important importance of Tariq Jadid. Then again, Hazur writes, Khalifat uh, al-Masih Sani, that uh, Tariq Jadid go wasiyat ke baad aai. You know, it's very important to uh, enjoy this word. That Tariq Jadid go wasiyat ke baad aai. Mugar iske liye peshro ki hasiyat hai. Ko wo nazame no ke masih ke liye ek aliyah ki hasiyat hai. जो के तारीख की जीत में हिस्सा लेता है वसीयत के निजाम को वसी करने में मदद देता है हर शख्स जो निजाम में वसीयत को वसी करता है वो निजाम में नो की तामीर में मदद देता है एक दो दी तारीख के जदीद हैड अ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इनैगोरेटेड आफ्टर अल वसीयत इट इज इन इफेक्ट अ फॉरनर रनर इन अदर वर्ड्स इट इज एन अलीजा टू द मसाया ऑफ द न्यू ऑर्डर and it proclaims the ultimate superior supremacy of the message and principles of the promised Messiah Salatu Islam. Every person who participates in Tariq e Jadid helps to foster the system of Al Wasiyat. And every person who does this helps the establishment of the new order. So this gives uh, uh, sure. the importance and how the Tariq e Jadid, as a matter of fact, is the continuation or al-has, a forerunner of wasiyat. So this is a, 
a beautiful explanation of Hazrat Khalif Tumusi, and I encourage the members to read Nizam No in Urdu. And the translation, the new world order is also is available in English. Jazakumullah. Very comprehensive, very detailed answer. Uh, Najisab, you want to let the questionnaire in? Ji, ji. So again, we'll request uh, Bilal Tahir Sahib to please go ahead and mute yourself and you can now ask your question. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak. Dear Ramadan Mubarak. My question is, are any of you in Jamia? Uh, no, uh, none of us here is in Jamia. I was in Jamia, but um, I'm a member of B now. Yes, yeah, so you're a graduate of Jamia. Yes. Okay, and what Jamia Dibar brother did you graduate from? I graduated from Jamia UK, and uh, just to put a connection there, uh, to connect that with the with the topic we had talked earlier, and maybe Anwar Khan Saab, you can also shed some light on that, on how Jamia art or training of missionaries comes under Tahrik e Jadid. Uh, so I'd like to pass that on to you. You talked about the Holy Quran, but maybe shed some light on how Tariq al-Jadid serves in terms of training missionaries around the world. Jazakallah. Tariq al-Jadid, one of the, there are 12 elements, actually four or five we mentioned, but creating jamias or missionary school, it was actually a brainchild of Hazrat Masih al-Islam himself. When one of the leaders passed away, Mawli Abdul Karim Sahib Salkoti, at that time, he felt a need or necessity that there should be an institution whereby we can train scholars to go and uh, spread the message of Islam and, res and, and respond to all the allegations which are ma made, which is made against this. So Tariq Ajdeed initiated that. So we have eight jamias, mashallah, in uh, UK, in Canada, in Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Rabwa, Pakistan. Uh, we also have in Bangladesh and one in Indonesia, to, to my recollection. And all these people who graduate, they go seven years of rigorous training. And after their training, they are sent uh, uh, internships in various countries of the world. And after the internships of one or two years, then they are settled in a jamaat. And every three or four years, they rotate, go to different jamaats. They are totally dedicated and fully prepared to address any and all questions uh, which are uh, uh, rattling the minds of people about Islam, Ahmadiyyat. Jazakumullah, Sana uh, Do we have any other questions? It looks like we have one more question. Uh, question from Mohsin Beg Sahib, who says, MashaAllah for the presentation and covering this in detail. Kodam is the youth and the future generation of this blessed Jamaat. However, we see there is a lack of attention towards this blessed scheme amongst our youth. What can we do differently to achieve the target set by our blessed Imam, Hadrat Tala bin Nasir Aziz? So um, who wants to take that question? Um, both of you are very experienced in that field, uh, Manuel Khan Sahib of collection. Well, if the are behind, what can we do? The, the thing is that you should look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture was presented by Hazrat Amirul Mumineen A. Talab Nisazi yesterday. Mm -hmm. When he uh, gave a khutbah, this was the best khutbah for which we have uh, commendations from Arab world. He talks about how the kalima is so important. And mm -hmm. when we are really depending on Allah, then means are, are going to be generated by him. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is just make an intention and go ahead with a spirit of sacrifice. I give you an example, two examples I gave you. There was one person who uh, in United States uh, who was doing PhD and uh, uh, he had a regent scholarship mm -hmm. and people came to him for mosque preparation under Tariq Ijdid and uh, requested donation from him. So what he did, he gave all $3,000 of uh, a region scholarship, which he received to, towards this scheme. Would you believe what happened? Six weeks later, he received from the university that your entire tuition for the whole PhD program is waived. Sure. Immediately, Allah uh, responds to you. Why? 
who was uh, nine years old, 10 years old, I think, he gave, uh, uh, he collected some funds in a, a jar, coin jar, which we are going to distribute at Ijtima of Khudam to all mm -hmm. the children as well. So he collected $92 in it. And he said, this is for Tariq Ideed. Today, he has been selected. Two weeks ago, I have learned about it. The, he has been selected by NASA as an electric, electrical engineer pursuing research under NASA. Marshall. This is his gift, which Allah, eight years ago, he gave $92 and look how Allah uh, paid him so beautifully beyond his expectations that he was selected by themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, hasten towards, uh, towards the sacrifice. Before the Saturn uh, creeps into your head, hasten in the month of Ramadan, do as much as you can. And you would be surprised at how beautifully Allah is going to reward to you. And you don't have to uh, be convinced. You will be convinced by Allah himself. Inshallah. Allah, thank you so much. Uh, we've come to the end of the program. Before I request uh, Nabi Mirsaf to lead us in dua and a couple of comments, I'll just share the book. And I'm sure there's a lot of those stories, um, mashallah, and experiences. So this is the uh, on, from Al-Islam. The Odyssey of Sacrifice is the name of the book by Amr Mahmoud Khan Sahib. So when you go on the Al-Islam website, this, on the search bar, you can you know, type this, the name of this book, and it will open up. You can open up the PDF. And um, this was published by Mildes Khudam Ahmadiyya in 2015. Um, so you can, you can enjoy a lot of these stories that are all mentioned here and a very beautiful introduction to what Tariq Jadid is about and the details of it. So um, to you, uh, Naibu Mirsahib, the leaders in Doha, please. Jazak <clears throat> everyone. I uh, you enjoyed the program. It was very encouraging and uh, learning experience. Uh, for everyone, I believe. And uh, now please join me in for silent prayer. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Thank you very much. We had about uh, 76 uh, attendees, I believe. So 76 families only. Inshallah. you that you have 1.3 million uh, target be achieved. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do regional regional visits on our house now, so we'll get some tips from you, inshallah. Why not? Why not? We will do that. Mm -hmm. If the Lord has expected that, it is going to, just like you said, it is going to happen when the attention of Khalifa is towards a subject. Inshallah. Allah puts a special blessing in the heart of the people. Inshallah. It is his jamaat, it is his mission. We are just uh, helpers to, to make that happen. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Keep us in your prayers.